tough times, the reality of life makes it harder except what the future's holding for all of us. Higher force calling us, unexpected visits to the core of a tragedy pain has befallen us. And as we get in older, you quickly realize that you have to be stronger than you ever been. Lifespan has to be longer. Too many people taking life for granted. Too much negativity. What's really good, ladies and gentlemen? It's your man, Chef. We got something different coming at you. It's not going to be our weekly show. Um, we're going to bring somebody in. We're going to pick their brain. We're super excited to talk to her. Uh, first, let me introduce my guys. Crooked Smile, Crooked Smile, how are you, my brother? Doing beautiful as the day is and everything else like that. I'm glad to be here. That's what's up. That's what's up. Mr. Drake Adam, the guy who always wants to play like, you know, He's the life of the party and always wants to do things by coming in late. Boss, how are you, sir? You know how it is, man. Running on Puerto Rican time. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. But now, listen, this, is, this show is focused on one person. And she's an amazing young talent. We're going to pick a brand. We're going to talk some cool stuff. Um, now, I don't want to say it wrong. So I know her name is Jenna. Gemma Giuliana. Did I say the last name right? Because I always mess up people's last names. So did I say it right? Almost. It's Giuliana. I mean, it's pretty Juli much it. Yeah, it's just it said you said it different, but I mean, it's the same thing pretty much. You know, I, I don't know. I got this thing for always messing up people's names. And, you know, as, as long as people don't get mad, I guess I'm OK. You know what I mean? Like. But yeah, um, I'm OK. <laughs> no hard feelings. No, no. Now that's, that's what's up. And I, like I said, I, before we went to recording, I'm a Queens guy. I'm Queens, New York, through and through. So when I found out you were from Jersey, I was like, oh, she's one of my people. And before I get into any crazy questions of anything, are you a Jersey girl or like you're the complete opposite of a typical Jersey girl? I mean, what is a typical Jersey girl to you? That's what I need to know because, I mean, I'm just me. So, um, I mean, I'm from a state called New Jersey and I mean, that's it. <laughs> so what's your definition? Well, no, you know, well, you know, like the big poofy hair and, and the Jersey Shore girls, you know what I mean? Like they hang out out there and all that, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the, the party, 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 party girl. Oh, I mean, that's, um, that's more like a North Jersey thing, but that's where I'm from. But I mean, I don't really get gimmicked out like that. I kind of just, I'm more plain, but I mean. Right now I'm living in South Jersey where it's not really like that. So it's kind of weird, you know, um, but that's not what the whole state's about. So I would say, no, I'm not a typical quote unquote Jersey shore girl. <laughs> no, that's what's up. All right. So my definite first question, because, you know, it's what I ask people on a regular daily basis when I check up on people. Um, what's the what's your favorite thing right now? doing you know just trying to get through this quarantine time what is it that you're doing to occupy your time um my favorite thing to do right now is play my nintendo switch Lite, um which i got for christmas thankfully because um i'm reading now that they're all sold out in the whole country and they won't get restocked till like the summer so i'm very thankful that i have my switch and i can get all my favorite games so i've been passing time by playing um pokemon and Super Smash Bros. and I'm looking to up my uh, my game stash, so I should be getting some more games in the coming week. So, yeah, games. Awesome. Um, mm -hmm. my question for you would be, uh, you know, I've seen that you did some professional wrestling work. I'm not sure if you still are or not. I haven't seen any recent work from you, but uh. What got you into professional wrestling? Who was your uh, favorite professional wrestler and why did you join in? Um, well, I am still a pro wrestler. Um, it's just that now the country is on lockdown, so no one could be doing anything as of right now. So there's no current work, um, you know, from this past True. month. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> so I kind of can't really do anything right now. <laughs> um but, um, so what got me into it was that, um, I watched it as a kid and I kind of like, that was like one of like the only things that I, um, gravitated towards that kind of gave me hope, um, coming from a 
kind of bad upbringing up in North Jersey, like I uh, mentioned before. Um, so that was like the one thing that gave me hope. And um, uh-huh. as I got older and when I graduated high school, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. But then something clicked in my head where I'm like, you know what? I want to be a wrestler. Um, I, I think that's the only thing that my heart is telling me to go towards because I wasn't seeing myself going to college to have a um, a degree and getting a job in that aspect. Although I did have, um, I did work uh, office jobs and all that, you know, in between all that. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, there's really not much of a crazy backstory, but I mean, just gave me some hope and that's what I wanted to do. All right, so I'll jump into my question, and since people don't obviously know you're wrestling, like Drake Adams here, because he can't keep up with his homework. So how far in your wrestling career, um, what's been your biggest match, in your opinion? Like, what do you think, like, overall is your best match and best, or, like, biggest match? Um, well, I have started training in 2014, so I've been doing this for a little bit of time now, um, and... As of current, I would say my biggest match, I mean, I don't really feel like I had that moment yet to even say I had, like, the biggest match. But um, there are a few matches I'm proud of, so, um, but I, I I, don't feel like I'm there yet, so I'm not really satisfied in my career right now. So I'm looking for that moment to have that big match um, as of right now. But, I mean, I've worked with so many talented people along the way, so um, that definitely... Um, you know, was a good milestone in my career, especially uh, being the La Femme champion at Phoenix Pro for over a year. I worked some awesome people defending my title there. I would say a good match I had was with Chris Statlander, as you guys know, the alien. Um, that was a really fun match, and I really enjoyed it. And I've also had other fun matches along the way. So I would say that was a, a monumental match in my career, especially defending the title against uh, a talent such as herself. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, I got two because I didn't know where you're from. Now, uh, I don't want to use the word hood, but I'm definitely from that that environment. Um, so what – see, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to word this because I'm not trying to promote any kind of negative. Am I from the hood? <laughs> Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, because obviously, like, you, you know, it, you're from a rough area, and I understand exactly what that's like. But, like uh-huh. – um, was there like a, a wrestler that you seen and said, damn, like that, I understand that story and, and maybe that's what led you into it. You know, like, I'm just curious, like what exactly was wrestling that, that escape? Like how, if you could just touch on, on how wrestling took you away from that mentality of the, the situation you were going through. I don't want you to say the situation because it's none of nobody's business, but like, how was that your escape where you could channel it into something positive and then, you know, pursuing this and going forward. And then after that, if you could just tell me what your tattoo on your leg says, because I'm an artist and I seen it, I was like, what did that say? So if you could just go through that, then, you know, please. Absolutely. So um, pretty much. Um, so I really didn't have um, a lot of uh, like, I want to say happiness. Like I, I didn't really have like that environment where I felt very happy. Um, but when I watched wrestling, it just gave me like a feeling that, um, life wasn't really giving me, like it gave me like hope and emotion. And I, my feelings came out into, you know, what was going on, you know, with storylines and such, and with wrestling, um, it captivated me in a way where I wasn't really captivated in, in real life. So that was pretty much it. Um, one person I would say was like, uh, a huge inspiration would be, um, biker taker. Um, so I really loved his character and, um, I, I love the badassness of it. And that's something that drawn to me and especially someone like Eddie Guerrero, he was awesome and I loved everything he did. Um, so that was pretty much my, uh, my hope, I guess, like it just, it just brought something out of me that I didn't really have. Of, like outside of that um but um the the tattoo on my leg so i so it's funny it, it came in infraction so the first tattoo i ever got was the the bottom part of my ankle which is a chinese symbol for love 
And then I added on to it um, two years after that. And it says strength and passion. So my leg right, you know, reading down is strength, passion and love. So um, that's something that I hold on to. And um, yeah, I decided to get it tattooed on me. Nice. That's awesome. Um, my one question, since Mr. Crooked Smile over here says I don't do my homework, he probably don't know that you've held a title. You've been a champ for a 47, 477 days. Sorry about that. Uh, can you take us through that title reign? What were the uh, highs, the lows, and uh, yeah, just the whole story about there? Um, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. No, all good. Um, I saw that you were a champ for uh, 477 days. Why can I not say that word today? And uh, I was just asking to take us through the, your uh, title reign there. It's a pretty long time to hold a strap, so I'm curious as the story is for it. Oh, yeah, the, the La Femme Championship, as I mentioned before, in Phoenix Pro. Um, so, yeah, I held on that baby for a long time. Um, so... It was pretty emotional, I would say. I it, it gave me a challenge that I never had before, and I got to um, be the forefront. And um, I my goal was really to bring up that division because um, I, I figured, you know, um, what else am I doing it for if I'm not trying to help boost up everyone around me and everyone boosts, you know, each other in that aspect, because I believe that we all need to help each other to, you know, reach to the top. So, um, I wanted to be the, the forefront leaner leader in that, excuse me. And, um, so it was pretty challenging. I mean, the travelers were, the travels were long, mostly by myself, um, pretty far away from where I lived and it was just a challenging time. But, um, as I mentioned, I, I work with people such as Chris Atlander there, so that was pretty cool. And I, um, yeah, I, I was pretty proud of my title reign, but I feel like I could have done more in that aspect, but I gave it all my, my best shot and I worked with what I had and yeah, I, I was, I'm pretty proud of, you know, being the longest reigning champion there. So it was, it was definitely a long time, but I would say it's well worth it, you know? All right, so the question I'm going to throw it at you since we have all these wrestling promotions going on. Unfortunately, not right now due to the pandemic shit, but if you had the choice, what would be your dream company to go to, like an AEW, WWE, Impact Wrestling, so on and so forth? You know, um, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Um, so I, I would want to be somewhere where I'm valued and where I can be happy. So it doesn't necessarily have to be one specific place, but like I said, like as being the longest reigning La Femme champion, I want to bring value and I want to be valued as, you know, um, a crucial roster member. So if I'm not bringing value or, you know, if the value is not being brought to me, then and I'm unhappy there, then I don't want to do it. So I just want to be somewhere where I'm happy and I can work and be valued and, uh, you know, help boost up the, the company in whatever my my task is, is supposed to be at that time. So I, I really don't know. It could be anywhere. All right. Now, I'm curious, how did you get into the LFC? Because, like, I have no idea. Like, I know people that work there and things like that. So um, I like their product. I think they, they value their, their talent and everything else, and they showcase them really well. But I'm curious of, of how was it? Did uh, did you have like a management that reached out to them, or did they? You know, how did it? How did you get into the LFC? Um. Well, it's kind of weird how that happened. Um, I'm not entirely sure how it happened, but it, it happened. So I believe I was. It, it had to do with Twitter. Like people were like tweeting at me or or something because of some. I can't really remember, but. Then they got in contact with me and asked me if I, I would like to work. And so I kind of just started talking and, you know, then I made my way to Vegas. So it, it's pretty, it was pretty a fast process, but um, 
I saw their product and I was like, you know what? Like, I think I definitely want to try this. And I did. Um, it was it, it was quite the experience, really. It, it's unlike anything I've ever done, um, especially, you know, fighting out in the middle of Vegas, um, Fremont Street. Um, it, it, it's pretty wild. I, I never really got into any like fights or anything before, but I wanted to test my abilities in that. And um, I'm just looking forward to going back soon um, whenever this whole pandemic ends, because um that was my first bout, which was last July. And now that I have the experience and I have a, a, more knowledge in how the fights work and everything, I'm I'm pretty confident for my next fight. So I'm just looking forward to going back. Since we're already on the topic, um, what was it like stepping into that cage for the first time, you know, for the LFC? Where was your head at and what was the preparation like for that first match? Um, so I just pretty much trained and I, um, you know, try to get in good shape. I try to put on a, a little bit of weight so I can, you know, not be, you know, like super flaily how I used to be. Um, but, um, my head going into that fight was, it, it just happened so fast. I, I wasn't, I was kind of like, I don't, I wasn't really sure what was going to happen or anything because I, I never did it before so I was kind of like nervous but I tried my best um and it oddly enough it wasn't even a cage it was actually um a wrestling ring because um the same venue um had a wrestling show like a few hours after that in that same spot so we actually had to do in a wrestling ring which I'm more comfortable in as you know um it, it was just crazy it, it happened so fast and you know, especially with the elements of never being on the West Coast before and all that, it, it took a, a little toll on me. Um, but it, now that I've, I've done it, I have more experience and I have a better idea of, you know, how to handle myself for next time. All right. <clears throat> so compared to like a wrestling crowd and the LFC crowd, like what is it different and like how is it compared if they are compared or if anything like that um i would say that you know lfc they're looking for girls to fight like you know hit each other hard um but it, it's almost the same thing as wrestling really um when you really think about it because you you know the crowd's gonna cheer for who they cheer for they're gonna not care for who they don't care for they're gonna boo who they boo it, it it's all the same aspect um but I don't know. I felt the crowd was pretty hot for me during the fight, even though I was losing. But um, I guess it just matters how you present yourself. And as being a um, a pro wrestler, I know how to you know carry myself in that aspect. So maybe I had a little bit more of a charm to me. I'm not sure, but um, it's almost the same thing, really. You you know, the, we're just fighting. That's pretty much the premise, just like wrestling. That's what's up. That's what's up. So you, you definitely knew how to work the crowd. You know what I mean? Like these two guys, I'm the only one here that that's not a wrestler. They're both independent wrestlers. Uh, so they, I guess this is why they're asking those kind of questions. Cause you know, obviously they would understand better. Now my, I want to go off topic cause I listened to something and I found out that uh, you like wine. I'm a big wine guy. So I know this is completely off of everything we've been asking, which is mad random. It's what I do, but um, your two favorite wines and why, and also because I definitely went through your Instagram. I, I'm the one who does all our art, so I love art, and you seem to be someone who likes art with, with a lot of your posts. So uh, I'm curious on your two favorite wines, because like I said, I love wine, and uh, your style of art. So if you could just jump into that real quick, I'd appreciate it. Sure. Um, and what do you mean by wines? Do you mean like the the types or like the actual like like names of uh, – like No, 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 like the types, that, like, the types, because – no, no, just just the the types. Do you like like um, do you like white? Do you like red? Do you like something a little peppery? You know what I mean. Like, what's your taste of wine? Okay, um, so I I'm pretty much drawn to Cabernet. Um, that's my my go to my my you know my favorite reds. Um, and for whites, I go with Chardonnay. Okay, okay, and your art is it more urban? Is it um? I'm just like I said, it's 
I'm, I'm a graffiti artist. So that's what I stick to. But do you have like a certain art type? Do you like uh, mosaic? Do you like, you know, stuff you'll see like where, you know, you scribble some crazy stuff and it sells for like a billion dollars. Like what's your style of art? Um, I am unsure actually how to answer that because I'm not sure what style it's called or anything. Um, I like lots of, um, like, I, I really don't know how to describe it either. Um, like, like if you've seen my, my Pisces post where like you have like, like the Pisces girls or the fish or like that type of style, that type of floaty, like, um, that, that cool vibe style. I, I really don't know how to describe it, but, um, that, yeah, that's my style. I, I, I really don't know how to describe it. No, no, no. I appreciate it. I, like I said, I, I seen it and it was like, you had a, a few different things. I'm like, man, that's really cool. Like, oh, the color configuration was completely different. So I was like, oh, I really like that. But, um, I'm sure one of these dudes have another question and, and obviously, chef, you know, I, chef, what, chef, what's up, baby? What's up? You going to try and send this thing off with a question about wine? Well, no, I, I like wine, my brother. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you got to think where I'm from. We grew up on 40s and, and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So, at, at now, enjoying wine, and I found out she likes wine. I was like, oh, snap. And she's obviously from a bad neighborhood. I'm from a bad neighborhood. So, we evolved into enjoying better things in life. That's true. And um, I'm actually drinking some Cabernet right now. I'm finishing up this last bit of this bottle. Yeah. Um, I, you know, while you're in quarantine, what else could you really do but play Pokemon and drink wine? I mean, you know, that's the life right now. And, um, yeah, so the, the bad area type of thing, um, it's bad, but, you know, it could be worse. I'll just put it that way. But, yeah, <laughs> I do enjoy finer things in life now. That's true. That's what I'm trying to tell them. Like, it, mm -hmm. we, you know, what when we come from what we come from, when you start seeing a little bit or things might seem a little slower or seem a little more relaxed, we appreciate more because we're from a different environment. We're cut from a different cloth. So we understand and we appreciate the smaller things, you know, like, I don't know, maybe I'm just bugged out, but gentlemen, what do you have? Cause I know, I know Drake, I cut you off. It's what I always do. I apologize, homie. What do you got for her? Um, nah, uh, since you know, you know he doesn't even have a oh. question. Drake, just shut up. Shut up. You don't have a question. So I will give you the final question that you deserve, and it's for your fans. So for all your fans, what is your number one bucket list thing to you want to achieve in your career? Oh, that's a really great question. Um, so I want to be successful, obviously, um, in pro wrestling. Um not sure how that will be achieved or you know when but i just want to wrestle everywhere i want to wrestle the best people i want to get to that point where people you know will say like i want to wrestle Gemma. um i think she's awesome um i just want to be a great asset to any company that i work for because for so long i felt like i was floating around and not really you know, feeling satisfied, which I'm still not satisfied. But um, once this whole thing is over with the pandemic, I just want to be valued and I want to um, showcase what I got and I want to travel everywhere and um, hopefully uh, get signed to somewhere where I can make a living off of wrestling. Um, I just want to, you know, I just want to be successful and I want to win titles. I want to, you know, just be like that, that girl. Um, that, you know, I have a lot of odds stacked against me. You know, I'm not the biggest, I'm not the fastest, I'm not the most athletic, but um, I have my own style and things that I do. And I think I can add a, a interest, interesting um, spin on any roster. So um, I think I could fit well in, in many places. Uh, I just need to be discovered and I need people to have more eyes on me to, to see that. So hopefully, um, you know, hopefully that happens soon, but I, I just want to be successful in my own right, pretty much. That's what's up. Gentlemen, do we have any other questions? Because I know it's getting a little crazy with you, too. It's been getting a little hot lately with the both of you. But um, do we have any more questions for this young, beautiful lady? If not, uh, let me know so then I can ask her to plug all her social media and everything else. I just need one of you because I know you're beefing right now. 
So one of you just tell me if you have any more questions. So clearly the boss, quote unquote boss, didn't even have a question to ask her at the end. So no, we'll leave it at my question. It's a great way to send it off. We'll let her plug everything and get her on her way. All right. So we thank you for your time because once again, I know you have, well, we all have stuff to do and it's a crazy time and, you know, you definitely got to catch them all and everything. But um, please uh, plug everything, plug all your social medias or anything and, and we'll put everything in the title and everything so people can understand how to see your work, how to see your Instagram, how to see your Twitter. So just plug it away and then we'll send them out of here. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, so um, you guys can find me on Instagram at the Gemma Juliana. Um, my Twitter handle would be at Gemma Juliana. You can like my Facebook page is just simply Gemma Juliana. Um, and uh, yeah, I just look forward to getting back out there and hopefully seeing all my fans and going out there and killing it once this whole pandemic is over. So again, thank you guys for having me. It's been a blast and um, I'm going to raise this glass to you guys. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And on that, we out of here. Deuces.